to a different platform again because everybody in the United States is at school right now and they're all using <laughs> virtual technology. So uh, if you can see on the scrolling bottom there, uh, we're live with Ben Bennett. He is the uh, head assistant coach with the Central Michigan Chippewas. So we, we are definitely becoming a platform for Chippewa Nation. We've had several on here. Oh, uh, yeah. Pretty cool. He's the only four-time All-American in Chippewa history, which means, and I just learned this, that means he's qualified four times every year for the NCAA, which is awesome. And only one of two four-time conference winners, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, Thank you for having me. Hopefully you, your family, uh, your your wrestlers, everybody are doing okay. So um, talk about how you've been affected and, and uh, let us know how you guys are doing. Yeah, well, the, the biggest thing is obviously, you know, you, you feel bad for the athletes because they get through the entire season and uh, we get to the biggest tournament of the year, the national tournament. It, and those guys have put in all that work for, for months, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten months. And. Um, you know, our guys were really coming on at, at the right time. We had a really good end of the season, uh, a really good, um, uh, back tournament. I think our guys were really feeling confident and, uh, you know, and I think they were really excited for the nationals and then boom, it's over. And, uh, yeah, how many guys did you guys have that were going? We had six guys going. You know, oh, so three awesome. three of them had been there before. So three three of the guys, it was their first time. You know, but but the the crazy thing is, you know, it was in Minneapolis, and they were expecting forty thousand people, and I don't know how many people have ever wrestled in front of forty thousand people. So <laughs> that that's a unique experience that all those guys missed out on. And you know, I mean, I've the good thing is they're still NCAA qualifiers, right? I mean, they can't ever yeah. get away from them, right? Yeah, but. Exactly. But I think we had, you know, we, we really felt like we, we could have put some guys on the podium, you know, and I think we had some guys on our team that really felt like they were going to break through in place. And, uh, you know, I, I've had my chances. So for me, it's, you know, all this doesn't affect me as much as it affects those guys who you only get so many chances. And, and uh, you yeah, know, you feel bad, you feel bad for those them, guys. Right? Uh, not so much. You know, you <laughs> just, you just you uh, them succeed. Yeah, you get into coaching to help those guys and help them accomplish their goals and help them become better people. And and uh, you see the work they put in every day, the improvements they make, the maturity they make, and and uh, you know you know it's important to them. So when it gets taken away, it, it it's a bummer. It hurts. Do you, you think know? you feel a, for them? Um, what's your opinion on um, the NCAA's decision not to maybe either give those guys another year of eligibility or try to reschedule? Oh them? man. Well, I think rescheduling it would have been hard, you know, just because no one can train right now, really. So, you know, you got weight management that you're dealing with. That's hard to deal with when you can't train. Uh, if you can't train, then you jump right back into it. You, you better chance of getting injured, you know, so that's hard. Um, in terms of giving them more eligibility, that's, you know, you, you'd like to see that, but it's tough. There's a lot that goes into that to make that decision. So that's a really hard decision to make. You know, yeah, fortunately for us, um, you know, we got five of our six qualifiers back. You know, so from a from a fan standpoint, when they're like, "Come on, give them eligibility," but from inside the sport, they understand it's not realistic. Yeah, it's tough. There's just a lot of money, scholarship issues you got to deal with, and and uh, you know, it's it's not it's not an easy decision. I guess it's not so black and white. You know, there's a lot that goes into that. And, I guess it is what it is. It's not in our hands, you know. So well, what's uh, a few things? First of all, to be um, to be a wrestler and then a coach under one of the greatest that's ever blessed our sport and yes. Coach Pirelli has to be a, a heck of an experience for you. Yeah, I've been really fortunate. Um, you know, I got to wrestle for him for five years, and then I just finished my seventh season as a as an assistant with them. And, uh, you know, I'm always learning. I'm always learning something. Um, you know, I'm still, I'm still learning in the room from them wrestling wise. Just, uh, I, I really try to, um, he runs the room a lot, you know, so I'm, I'm hands-on a lot with the guys, but when he's teaching, 
even after practice when he's working with guys. Uh, I'm trying to pay attention as much as I can, you know, because the, there's uh, things I'm, the I'm better at. Yeah, I mean, look uh, at the guys that have come from him that are coaching you. Yeah, uh, yeah. Cover leads, right? Sentez. There's a ton. I mean, Sentez, Win Mahalik, I mean, Jake Pirelli, uh Casey Cunningham. Connor Dave Beebe. Boyard at Michigan. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, obviously uh, the lineage is amazing. Yeah, and those are just college coaches. I mean, there's ton. There's a ton of high school coaches, too, out there that have, uh, have done, really, done really well, you know. So. So you, you wrestled in, in high school, obviously. Where was that at? I'm from Rockford, Michigan, so near, near Grand Rapids, the west side of the state. So how old were you when you started wrestling? I was six, six years old. My dad and uncle wow. got me into it. My, my uncle was a, was a uh, Division three two two-time All-American at John Carroll in Ohio. So he was kind of the wrestling guy. He got me into it. My dad, my dad kind of just facilitated everything. My dad was the conditioning guy. Uh, my uncle was kind of the wrestling guy. So they kind so of teamed is, up. This and, is just life. This is Bennett family tradition we just wrestle yes yes awesome. so, i've done it my whole life so awesome so how was uh how was your high school career i was a well, it, it's kind of crazy you know me and scotty actually had the same record we're 213 and three yes and i asked him what i and i may and i'll probably ask you this towards the end but i asked him what is the match that like the most memorable time he's had or what he remembers and he says the three losses yeah, th those are the ones that stick out you know it, i heard him say that and, and i was like oh <laughs> man it, and <laughs> man those are the ones you really think about um just because you know in your mind you, you you go back and replay it and i wish i would have made this adjustment better or done this or prepared maybe better technically uh, whatever it is, you know, but uh, at the end of the day, those are also the most, probably the most important matches in terms of just growth and maturity. You know, I, I lost, I took third as a sophomore. And uh, so I won it as a freshman. I took third as a sophomore. And, you know, at the time I was really, really crushed and uh, like my world shattered. But, you know, I think as I looked back and then it was, it was like, that was, I needed that you were motivation. A state champion. Yeah, but it, it, when I look back, and I think that that loss kind of gave me a, and not not that I wasn't working hard and doing all the right things, but sometimes you just you need that. You need to get so knocked down a little bit. You your and, uh, yeah, yeah. So three times yeah. Michigan State champ. Yes. Wow. Yes. So that sophomore year, really, <laughs> you were like, "That's not happening again." Yeah, and it, and that's good sometimes to go through those those uh defeats and get your dreams crushed a little bit and i mean no one wants that but sometimes that's the best thing that can happen if you use it the right way that's what we tell our guys all the time you know you're going to lose the important thing is how do you use it are you going to get better from it or are you going to let it drag you down you know and so at, yeah. at, at first you know it drags you down a little bit but but that's if you, awesome. if you take it the right question. way i had a question come across it says um what advice can you give Florida that would help us get to the next level in, in, uh, in the sport? Oh, I think Florida's starting to make that jump. They got good wrestlers, you know, and it's getting better. There's some really good teams in Florida. Um, so I don't know what they've been doing, but um, I, think, I think wrestling in the South as a whole is, is, is improving a lot. You know, they got good coaches down there. Um, you know, my, my past teammate, Connor Beebe, is down there now. He has a club. Um, guy you just had on, Steve Mako, is down there. He has a club. Um, so they're adding a lot of great coaches, a lot of great clubs, and that's only going to help help the state, you know. But, I mean, we had Scotty on our team. Scotty was a Florida guy. He was a stud, you know. We have a Florida kid on our team right now. We really like Johnny Lovett from uh, Miami Southridge, and we really like Johnny. and. Um, you know, when we're recruiting, we're looking at those southern states because we know, we know it's on, it, it's coming up. You know, it's improving. So, so maybe we'll, we won't only be a football state now; we'll be a wrestling state too. I hope so. 
<laughs> I hope so. That'd be great, man. I didn't mean to jump in and interrupt you. I was getting that question over and then oh, no, you're the good. we're kind of on a delay. So I I think we both think we've stopped talking and then we kind of jump in on each other. So well, my apologies, man. So so three time, three time Michigan State champ in high school and then four time yeah. All American at you yeah. What um what has wrestling meant to you, man? I mean what what would you tell kids out there that are considering a sport at a young age or in high school or or um, why would you recommend wrestling? Man, for me, wrestling's been, uh, I mean, it's been my whole life. And I think the, uh, just what it teaches you, you know, it's the ultimate, uh, it, it, it's really cool because it's, I mean, it's the ultimate individual sport where you put in is what you get out, but you also got a team there you're, you're, you're wrestling for, you know, and, and uh, those guys mean a lot to you and you want to have success for yourself. You want to win. You know, but you also want to have success so your team can win, you know, so you get the best of both worlds. You know, it's an individual sport. You get that aspect of it. Uh, if you want to succeed, you got to put the work in. you got to be dedicated. Uh, all that good stuff, you know, teaches you to teaches you to be responsible and accountable. But you also have a team you're wrestling for at the same time, you know, and and, and so you still get to cheer on your teammates and and, uh, you know, you're still. You know, it, it, when you're training, you know, you're training to win, but you're trying to help the guy next to you, trying to pull those guys up. And so you get the best of both worlds in it. You know, not all sports have that, you know, so Absolutely. that's a pretty and, cool I mean, aspect. How about when you were in the classroom and maybe uh, struggles in the classroom or when you're done with college and you're you're starting in the real world? I mean, how how does that help you get through those tough moments? Just knowing, man, I, I was in a wrestling room. This can't, this can't yeah, stop me. You've overcome a lot of adversity if you if you've wrestled most of your life, high school, college. I mean, just the amount of adversity you've overcome. Um, you know, it's it, you're never going to go through a season and things are going to be perfect. You know, it just rarely happens. If 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 you do, you're one of the lucky ones. You know, you usually have some kind of injury, uh, something. So just the adversity you got to face, the weight cutting, um, the discipline you learn from it. You know, because it's not a you don't go to practice and you go home and it's over, you know, it's, it's 24 seven. It's, you got to be disciplined, you know, with your, with your life, the way you live, your lifestyle, your diet, your social habits. And so just the discipline you get from it, the structure you get from it um, is huge. It's huge. Sure. And um, I have a, a question. I don't know if you saw Kevin Nordstrom on. Uh, the other I didn't day. see his. I didn't, I didn't see him. And he spoke. I mean, it ended up, you know, typically on 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And before I yeah. knew it, he spoke for an hour and 20 minutes. And I yeah. Was like, wow. So he talked about the, um, how a lot of wrestling rooms should have some sort of uh, maybe mentoring program or offer some sort of program where the kids can maybe intern and just as far as on the education wise, so that they're kind of prepping them for real life. Uh, what what kind of program do you guys have as far as maybe a mentoring program or an education program that that helps keep your guys in line and focused on life after wrestling? Uh, well, we take our academics real seriously, and and that's one of the first things we look. And I think any coach will tell you that you know when you start recruiting a kid, one of the first things you look at is their academics, their grades. What are their grades like? Um, but then once they get here, you know we monitor them pretty well and. And Coach Borelli is real big on that. You know, he tells those guys, hey, you're not going to wrestle forever. You're not going to be wrestling forever. Uh, very few people get to wrestle till they're 30 or 35. And, and uh, you know, so we're on those guys all the time about academics. Um, we really encourage those guys, um, you know, get internships uh, during the summer when we're up here training, during the school year if you have to, if you can fit it in around, around our training schedule. Um, you know, and, and just stuff like that. So they're not, you, you know, like, and I heard Scotty say this, you know, you're coming to college to wrestle and get an education. You know, you're not coming here to, to be Joe College. You're not coming here to party. You're not, you know, if you're about that, you're in the wrong program. You're in the wrong sport, you know, and sure. you come here to be a successful wrestler and to get an education and set yourself up for, for life after wrestling. So but we have a lot of guys on our team right now. You know, they get internships and stuff like that in the summer on campus, whatever it is. And we encourage all that stuff. You know, we try to push those guys to, to seek out those opportunities. And they're there. They're on campus. There's opportunities everywhere. 
um, taking advantage of them is the biggest thing. Cool. So um, uh, you had you had mentioned Johnny Lovett earlier. Uh, so somebody messaged yeah. here. Uh, can you give your thoughts on the potential that he has? Oh, jo Johnny's an unbelievable athlete. I mean, uh, just his natural ability is uh, he, he's an amazing athlete. His quickness, his, his speed. Uh, he's got a good feel for the sport. I think it just kind of comes naturally. And those are good things to have, you know. Um, I think the biggest thing we're just working on with Johnny is just, you know, his, his skill, his technique, his strategy a little bit, really refining some of those things. Maybe his mat wrestling a little bit. I think a lot of high school wrestlers lack top and bottom wrestling. And, uh, I think for him, that's been his biggest challenge. He's real good on his feet. He's real quick. He's got real good takedowns. He's a real good reattacker. Um, you know, so it's just refining those little things as mat wrestling. Um, you know, but we, we really feel good about Johnny. We think he's going to be a big part of our team the next four years, you know. That's why we recruited him, you know. And yeah, he kind of fell into our, la our lap a little bit. Yeah, and then hopefully some younger Florida kids out there are, are seeing what yes. he's doing in the Michigan room yes. or getting to get his experiences of the coaches and the atmosphere so that yeah, you know, we can get some more of our studs up there around you guys. Yeah, it, 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 and Johnny, I don't know if you know him very well, but he's a pretty good guy to have around. You need those guys. Wrestling such a serious sport that uh, you need those guys around that can lighten the mood. And, and Johnny likes to joke and, <laughs> and laugh. And and uh, so, you know, he's a good guy to have around for that. You know, he kind of lightens the mood. He's always cracking jokes on guys and, and uh, challenging guys. And he'll challenge our heavyweight, Matt Stencil, who's an All-American. He always challenges Matt. And it's just good to have guys like that around. You know, to lighten the mood, to, to make guys laugh, and that's a good thing to have. Cool. So, um, I had this thought. What? Uh, so, your most memorable match in your career? Maybe the one uh, that you won. Maybe the one. That, maybe the one that you won that said, "Wow, I belong here. I can do this." Or maybe the one that you lost, but it, it said to you, "Man, I lost, but that guy's like good, man." I, and I and I hung in there. Or you know, I, yeah. I hear different perspectives from wrestlers. So. Uh, something does that make sense? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, oh man, there's a lot of them. Um, for I'd say for college, you know, my my I redshirted my first year, and and uh, you know, we always start the year with, with a couple open tournaments, and they have the freshman sophomore divisions, and so I remember we went to the Eastern Michigan Open, and I was asking Coach Bro, like, put me in the open, put me in the open. He said, nope, you got to wrestle freshman, sophomore. And if you win it, you can wrestle open at Michigan State next week. And so I said, fine. Mm -hmm. So I went and I won the open, uh, the freshman, sophomore division at Eastern Michigan. I said, well, can I wrestle in the open division next week? He said, fine, you can wrestle. And, you know, I ended up taking fourth, but, you know, I wrestled a handful of starters from other schools, and, and I beat them. And I lost in the semis to a guy that was ranked in the top 20 from Penn State, David Irwin. He beat me by a point, you know. But, I mean, he was a top 20 guy in the country. I think he was a senior, a junior or senior at the time. And I'm a true freshman, 18 years old. And, and uh, you know, I think you, you, you just have those matches. Even though you lose, you walk off the mat and you felt like, I could have beat that guy, you know. Yeah, I'm I, as I good as that guy. That's a wrestler's mentality. I asked, um, we have a, a young program over at the first academy that started, and we had our first state placer this year. Yeah. And I had him come on the show early on, and uh, I asked him, what's what's your most memorable match so far in your young career? And um, he talked about wrestling the, the number one uh, 195, no, 220 kid at uh, – at sea at lake island prep who won yeah. the whole thing yeah and um he said i he beat me quickly but you could tell that he wasn't taking like he took me serious like he came on the yes. and, yes. and wrestled me even though he pinned me in a minute or a minute and a half you know yeah. he didn't, he said i appreciated that he didn't cut me he didn't and just to get that little bit of respect was yeah pretty awesome so um yeah so that was cool to hear that from him so yeah weight class for him? Well, I started out at 174. So, you know, my first two years in the lineup, I was 174, and then I moved up to 184, and finished my last two years at 184. So, 
nice. just grew a little bit. You know, we have a lot of guys that do that in our program. You know, they go up weight classes. Scotty did that. He was a 25 pounder as a true freshman and ended up going up to 33. And, you know, Connor Beebe started at 133 in his senior year. He wrestled 141 and probably had the best season of his career. You know, won the MAC tournament and beat some pretty dang good guys. So you know, I just grew. I was lifting and your body grows. And, you know, I think that's kind of the trend in, in wrestling right now is, you know, don't kill yourself to make weight. It's not worth it. Uh, somebody messaged here and, you know, like, if you don't know, Love It only started wrestling in ninth grade. So yeah. something that I yeah. hear a lot from around the country is, you know, yeah, it's great if you had the opportunity to wrestle and being six years old, but don't be discouraged because there's a lot of people that don't start until seventh, eighth or ninth grade and, and it gets them a college education. They end up winning a state championship or qualifying yeah. and, and still do great things. So get in the room, right? Yes. Well, that's the other thing we liked about Johnny too is, you know, I mean, he was, he was, I think, a two-time state champ. But, you know, we're like, this kid only started wrestling as a freshman. We're like, man, he, he – and he ha- – if you can start wrestling as a freshman and have that kind of success, then then you got some some ability, you know, and you can be pretty dang good. And we got a few guys in our team like that, you know. We have a few guys in our team who didn't start wrestling until high school, you know, and wow, there's nothing awesome. wrong with so, that. So a few questions for you. You ready? Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm going to change it up a little bit because I'm getting – I'm getting um, – I'm getting some uh, some things here to like change up your rapid fire a little bit. Uh, but we'll still do some of the same stuff. So headgear or no headgear? No headgear. <laughs> folk style my... or freestyle? Yeah. <laughs> folks, folks, I'm a folks. I'm a mat wrestler. I'm a mat wrestler. I'm all about the mat wrestling. So folk style. That's awesome. So uh, well, you're at Central Michigan, uh, yeah. but I know he likes to ask the Sanderson versus Brands question. Oh, I can't pick those guys. I yeah. can't. <laughs> they're, they're, they're both great. It's hard to pick, you know. They they both they both got their own styles and and uh, you know that's the cool thing about, about about coaching and wrestling. You know, you you can have different styles. You don't got to be the same person. You know, everyone can be their own person and, and figure out what works for them. You know, that's they both awesome. and, they, uh, they've both about, done good. Okay, so BB versus Sentis. <laughs> oh, you can't make me pick between. <laughs> yeah, those are your guys. All right, so I got someone that sent this down. He said, "You're, you're down putting me by- in a bad. You're putting me in a bad situation if you make me pick that." <laughs> yeah. So I had this. I had uh, Shane McCall sent me a couple of cool questions. Yeah. So he said, uh, "You're down by three going into the third period. You have choice. Are you going top, bottom, or neutral?" Oh man, down by three. Um, you know, it depends, it depends on the match, depends on the situation a little bit, you know, na- naturally I'd be inclined to, to go down. Cause that's just how I was. I always chose bottom, get away, get a takedown, tie it up, you know? Um, but if I really felt like I could get the, get the turn, I'd go top, top was my best position, you know? So in my mind, I'm going top or bottom, top or bottom, just kind of depends. Awesome. So and then he asked this. Uh, only one day available to train. Do you go to a rumble or a clinic? Uh, I'd say a clinic. Clinic. The clinic, cool. I think, uh, you know, just the skill development, focusing on, on improving, getting better, uh, learning from people. Yeah, you know, that's real important, you know. Yeah, I like those questions. And this is stuff that I get from folks. Like I said, I'm just a kid's parent that – don't love yeah. the sport, right? So I, I feel like it needs yeah. to be heard. And I, I get folks like Shane McCall sending me cool questions like this that I can add in my life. Yeah, that, that's a good one. You know, I think I think competing is real important. And you need to get some competition in, but you know, in college you train a lot more than you compete. You know, and and we really spend a lot of time on skill development and, and improving and and uh, and just a lot of that kind of stuff. And I think in high school um, or younger kids, I think they like to compete a lot more. You know, they just naturally like to compete. And I get it. You know, I'm the same way. I like to compete. But, um, you know, I think just having periods of time where you're in the room, just working, learning, getting better. I think that's really, really important because in college wrestling, that's what it's like. I mean, we'll go all, all off season. You don't compete. You're just training all off season, you know, and, and you got to be able to do that and get, be used to that and just get better, you know. 
Uh, somebody said he knows it's BB all day. You know who said that? <laughs> who, Connor? <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how, what's he weigh now? It depends on what he weighs. <laughs> yeah. He put on here with his eyes winking. He knows it's BB all day. <laughs> uh, so, uh, pounds on Scotty. Yeah. Do you go singlet or two piece? Singlet. I'm a singlet guy. I'm used to that. I like yeah. it. Uh, birthday cake or ice cream cake? Ice cream cake. I'm an ice cream guy. That's my that's my weakness. <laughs> Ice cream is my weakness. You prefer the beach or the pool? Beach. Definitely the beach. Right. Yeah. Now fishing, salt water, fresh water. Oh, geez. Uh guess I don't really have a preference. I mean, <laughs> you just like the fish, right? Either. I don't I don't do it enough. My dad fishes a lot. I wish I I wish I got out more, but hey. he he said 158 pounds of solid steel. <laughs> oh, he might he might have the edge. <laughs> I have the edge. Uh, I don't know. I throw these out there because Ricky likes them, but I, and and they're fun. But I'm trying to remember all the stuff he always says. So Popeyes or Chick Fil A? Oh, uh, Chick Fil A. I love Chick Fil A. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't have much else. I guess we can talk for a while. I've got. I know I have a guy you probably know in Daryl Thomas coming next. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We competed uh, against those guys. Another recommendation from the great Scotty Sentis. He uh, referred him to me. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that he is going to be part of that Sentis crew down there in uh, Canada. Okay. So I think he's getting nice. a good one there, huh? Yeah. He, they were doing good things at ODU. So that's, you know, you, it's unfortunate. You don't want to see – see programs cut especially you know they were doing well they were recruiting well they were tough i mean this year we didn't wrestle them but we always wrestled them every year and up until this year and it was always a great duel you know um we'd go back and forth but I mean, those guys were tough they were tough and i think he was a, he was a big part of that you know um yeah you know, it's so, like he's building a good uh, a good squad down there yeah yeah so um you know that'd be a good addition if he ends up moving down there with, with Scotty and, you know, Scotty's got a good thing going on too. So, you know, yeah, I hope they he, do well. He, I just hope, I just hope they don't do well against us. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's coming behind a, uh, he's coming behind a coach that was just okay. Right. Yeah. He was all right. He was all right. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of good, you know, there's, it's, it's pretty cool just to, uh, you know, I got, I got to wrestle against a lot of these, head coaches and stuff and so now i get to coach against them and and uh it's, it's a pretty cool experience so that's fun yeah yeah i know your your head coach says man i i don't want to see those guys in other colors <laughs> i know it is it is a little different but it, it's cool you know when we go to these tournaments or we're at the nationals or you know and and there's all these seeing you guys there i mean they're at other schools but you know so you're always running into scotty and win and and jason borelli and they you know you're running into all these guys it's kind of cool you know you all got something in common you know they're kind of like your, awesome. your guys well, a little hey, bit i really appreciate you coming on man this has been awesome and i i could keep going but i've got daryl oh, coming good. on it'll be another great yeah. call and uh yeah. listen i don't know if 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 you're if your partner in crime the other coverly wants to come on man feel free send yeah, them definitely. if uh if uh Borelli's son over at stanford wants to come on man get him on uh, yeah man i'm here or anybody else you know that is in the wrestling community yeah. that i uh, yeah. just wants to talk wrestling tell florida uh it's perfect good to have these parents and all these kids get the coaches on here so yeah, you because know, they're yes. going to have to make a decision. One yeah. day. Yes, they will. Maybe hopefully, you take it easy. And I hope. Anytime, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, man. Anytime, just click the link or hit me up. You got my number now, so yeah, let's do it. Yes. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Appreciate uh, I it. I hope I, was, I, hope, I hope I was all Scotty said I was. <laughs> You're all. It was awesome. It was perfect. It was perfect. <laughs> so anytime I get to talk wrestling a little bit, I'll take it. So. <laughs> All right, man. Will you be safe, okay? And uh, good luck out there. All right, there. you too. Thank you, you too.